You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks, we get our S10 one step closer to becoming a true mini truck by modifying our front suspension. Plus, we'll add a top of the line air control kit that can be controlled with an app. And you can be standing across the parking lot and you can still air out. This has got to be the most iconic design ever. Hey, welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. And I'm Eric Smart. And we're here again with this 95 S10 that is coming along pretty nicely. Yeah, and if you can't tell by looking at this, we're building ourselves a mini truck. And if you're just joining us, well, we got big plans for this build. Check it out. We started with our S10 in completely stock form with its coil spring independent front suspension and leaf springs in the back. We ditched the leaf spring setup to install a full back half bolt-on five link kit. We made room for the new frame by sectioning the bed, allowing the notch and the axle to tuck up in between the inner wheel tubs. Then we boxed it all in. Inside the bed will be the air suspension supporting components like the compressor and tank. Up front, we're gonna be modifying and plating the A-arms, ditching the springs and shocks, and putting in air springs instead. Once we install the bags, remote shock mounts will finish it off. But there's like something missing back here still. It might be a bed. <laughs> well, I still got some stuff I need to do on the bed, so I'm gonna go work on that now. All right, now while Mark's doing that, this rear suspension is done. It looks very complicated, but the kit made it super easy. It was all bolt in and it's just about ready to go. But before we're ready to put wheels back on this thing and get it rolling, we gotta do the front and that's not gonna be quite so easy. But thankfully, we've got an expert to help us out with that. For someone who's never done it, it's hard to go wrong with an S10. You may remember Ben Osborne, who is a mini truck expert that helped to inspire us to build a mini truck ourselves in the first place. He also supplied us with our rear suspension kit that you saw last time. We brought him back into the studio to get his expert opinion on modifying our front suspension. And Ben, we got your parts installed. What do you think? They look great. I think I couldn't have done a better job myself, Eric. Well, we appreciate that. We appreciate the parts and we appreciate you coming in to help today. So today, like I said before, we're gonna be working on our front suspension. Now that is a little bit different from the rear. It's not just cutting the frame off and bolting some new stuff on. We need to do a little bit of modification this time. So that's what Ben's here for. And Ben, what's, what's our first step to getting this taken care of? Well, the first step to any good project is tearing it down. Let's do it. All right, let's go. First, we need to remove the calipers and rotors to get them out of the way. Then we can move on to the tie rods, ball joints, and everything else to get this spindle out. All right, let's see how easy this wants to come out. Easy enough. Now that we've got both ball joints disconnected and get this drop spindle out of the way, we're gonna take this spring out of here. See if you can push the arm down at all. A eh, little bit, not much though. There, there it goes. You go. All right, now let's get these control arms out of here. And it seems like Mark always disappears during the dirty part of this thing. What do they call that, seniority? <laughs> Yep, that's all we got left in here is just pop this upper control arm out and then I think we're ready to go take a look at the new stuff. You have to pull the uh, bolts out, don't you? Um, if you don't have clearance to move the shaft off of them, yes. Yeah. All right, well, that about does it for the front, so let's go check out the new stuff. So now that we've got our front suspension torn apart, we've got all of our old parts here and most of this is just gonna get thrown away. Now, we are gonna be reusing the shocks because they didn't look too bad. And the truck already had these drop spindles on it and we're gonna be reusing those too. That way, we don't have to buy new ones. Now, over here, we've got some OE style Duralast control arms that we found on the AutoZone Pro website. So, Ben, what are we doing with these things instead of, say, some tubular control arms? Well, Eric, a few reasons. Tubular arms are expensive and Rebuilding the original arms with ball joints and bushings is a lot of labor. So we can start fresh, we can modify these lower control arms so that these areas don't hit the frame and we have clearance and mounting for the air spring. Eric, the first thing we'll do is I'm gonna mark where we need to cut for clearance. 
Almost like you've done this before. Once or twice. This might look pretty precise, but you don't have to be too exact because you're still going to have to touch it up and do some fitting before you weld the plates in. All right, well, now that we've got those cut out, it's time to clean them up a little bit with a flap disc and uh, we'll get a template made. All right, well, I think those are just about ready to go. Uh, ben, I don't think that'll hold a bag. You're right, Eric, it won't. So how about you go cut me a couple of these out of metal? Now that we've got our template made, we're gonna trace it onto a sheet of 3 16 steel. Then we'll fire up our 40 Flex 30 again to get these things cut out. Well, there's plate number one. Coming up next, we break out the plasma cutter and welder and finish up our modifications to the front end. All right, well, we've got our plates cut and fitted, so now it's time to get them tacked up, welded in, and then we'll be ready to fit the bags. To make sure that we don't warp the metal or the control arm, I'm gonna weld in opposite corners of the plate. We've got the plates welded onto both of our control arms now, so that means there's only a little bit more left to do before we're ready to get back over to the truck, do a little bit more clearancing, and start putting everything back together. But first thing before we get these painted and cleaned up, we gotta find center down here in place of the factory coil spring so that we can mount our bag. We got a single bolt hole here, and we're gonna drill two holes and connect them to make a slot. That way our bag has a little bit of adjustment on the bottom in case we need to change it up a little bit. So, in order to find center on here, all you're gonna do is take a straight edge, go across the factory coil spring seat, right in the middle, take a, a scribe, scratch you a mark right there, then you're gonna do the same thing, go in the other direction, right in the middle. Scratch a mark, and you're ready to drill. All right, well, we got our control arms done. Uh, what you been up to over here? Well, nice job on those. While you were busy, I cleaned up the frame and marked it for your clearance cuts because when the air springs in here, we don't want anything to puncture it or rub on it. And because the air spring's now in the way, we can't mount our shock in its original location. So we're gonna hang it on this side of the frame. To do that, I started with a template. Okay. And then I fabbed you up some brackets. Awesome. Well, that'll save me a little bit of work, but I guess I got the rest of it cut out for me, don't I? You better break out that plasma. All right. It's a little tricky cutting in these tight spots, but we'll come back and clean it all up. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. What about you? I agree. Let's check it out with the bag. Oh, yeah. Plenty of clearance. I don't think you'll have any issues on the road. We're going to start with the lower control arm so that we can finish mounting the bag. Well, we're, we're close. Oh, there we go. All right, that'll hang for a minute. Looking good. Yeah, we're, we're in pretty good shape so far. Perfect. Oh, that is nice. Be interesting to see what happens when we get that upper and the spindle in. We'll finish installing the upper control arm and then we can wrap up the front suspension. There's the first one. Just get the second one in, get it nutted down. Yeah, in that case, put in all the shims. Yeah. All right. So before we put the knuckle back in, we wanted to show the difference between a drop spindle and a stock spindle and why we're going to be reusing this instead of putting a new stock spindle in it. Now, on the stock steering knuckle, the spindle itself sits lower towards the lower ball joint mount. On a drop spindle, it sits higher, kind of in between the upper and lower. Now, you might think that's a little bit counterintuitive, but when you raise the spindle, you actually put your wheel hub higher off the ground, which brings the rest of the truck down. So you get about two inches of lowering in the front with this, and without that drop, we wouldn't be able to lay frame. So we're gonna get this cleaned up a little bit, and we're gonna reuse these old ones. 
All right. We're getting pretty close here, I think. Agreed. Not much left. We're gonna have to get shorter links. Nah. Looks like you're about done, Eric. Just about. I mean, I gotta tighten a couple things up and get the brakes on, but I can do that later. I know you're a busy man, you don't have all day. Is there anything else I'm gonna have to modify before we can lay this thing out? I got a few things for your punch list. I brought you a steering kit that'll resolve the tow issues you're gonna have when the truck's really low. You wanna raise the exhaust so it doesn't drag the ground. You wanna modify the transmission cross member, get it above the scrub line. All right, awesome. I think we could take care of that. Now, once again, Ben Osborne, owner of Buddy's Garage. You've been a huge help today, and I can't wait to show you this thing when we're done with it. I'm glad to help, and I'm excited to see it. Next up, we get crafty and begin installing our new air control system. I went ahead and made us a template. That way, we can get both of these in the exact same spot. Well, we've got ourselves a mini truck. Well, almost. Uh, we've got bags on all four corners on our S10 now, and it's time to, well, kind of finish the install of the suspension, which we've got to get air in the bags and air back out of the bags. And it's gonna be a little bit of work, but that's what we're gonna tackle next. So when you're building an air suspension kit, obviously you have a lot more to consider than just the bags. Now we went to Summit Racing to look at some options for controlling those bags, because you still have to get the air in and out of them. Now there's a lot of options as you can see here, and we wanted to show you a couple of them just so that you know what you're getting into when you try to build a kit like this for yourself. At the base level, you've got this kit right here. It is all inclusive, everything that you need to get your suspension to function. Now it comes with your valve block, you've got your controls, your gauges, all your plumbing and your wiring, plus dual compressors and a five gallon air tank. This is a kit from Ride Tech, and it will get you doing exactly what you wanna do with your air suspension. But if we want to take your kit up to the next level, well, you could upgrade to something like this. Now, everything that you see here is just the controls. It's got an ECU, it's got a little touch screen here, all of the wiring to get it all working. Basically, all of this does everything that this does. So it's a little more complicated and quite a bit more expensive, but what's nice about this is you could just piece together the rest of the kit on your own, or if you have an existing kit like this in here that Eric just showed you, you could buy this kit to upgrade it to take it to the next level. Or you could get this, the AccuAir Ultimate E-Level Plus onboard air suspension control kit. At first glance, it might look a lot like that first kit that we showed you, but it's a lot more in depth than that. So it is still dual compressor, five gallon tank, and all of your plumbing and wiring. But instead of having your valves separate, they're actually contained inside this tank right here. Now, that frees up a lot of space when you're trying to set a kit like this up. It also comes with ride height sensors for all four corners. You've got your controller here, your ECU, and if that's not cool enough, you have an app on your phone as well that you can control all of this from pretty much anywhere. It's got long range Bluetooth connectivity and you can be standing across the parking lot and you can still air out. Now, this is what we're gonna end up putting into our truck because we want all the cool features that this thing offers. So let's get to it. The first step to getting this AccuAir kit installed is gonna be getting our compressors and our tank bolted down. Now that's gonna be the bulk of this kit aside from all the plumbing and wiring that we'll worry about later. So to do that, we're gonna try and make it look really nice. We're gonna mount our first compressor on this side of the bed right here. We're gonna mount the tank to that tunnel in the middle. And then the second compressor is gonna get mounted as a mirror image of the first one on the other side so we can keep everything nice and symmetrical. So, let's get to it. I went ahead and made us a template. That way we can get both of these in the exact same spot. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get this set up here. The outside bracket of it towards the outside of the compressor, it stops right at the edge of it. We're gonna leave a little bit of room back here for the compressor housing to actually sit and not be outside of this lip right here. Mark this corner, we're back in our lines, and then we just mark all the holes. Time to move on to the tank. Let's see about getting this tank fitted. 
This kit did come with a template, but I decided to make my own using tape because this surface has a slight curve to it, and I wanna make sure it's gonna stay in place while I'm marking and drilling. Get this tape off and make sure these brackets fit. Mm. Nice. All right, now that we got the brackets tightened down, it's time to see how this tank fits. So far, so good. Oh yeah, good stuff. Okay, well, now that we've made it this far, all I've got left to do back here in the bed is do the same thing on the passenger side as I did over here on the driver's side, get the second compressor installed, and then we get to move right along to everybody's favorite part of something like this and do all of the lovely plumbing and wiring. Coming up, we'll pull some strings and show you just how simple it is to make your own airlines, and we put our new suspension to the test. Well, we have our compressors and our AccuAir tank mounted here in the bed, which means we're really close to getting this thing back on its own four tires for the first time since it came in here. Now, we do still have to get air in and out of our air bags to be able to do that. So we're gonna start back here, drill a couple holes in this nice fresh bed liner, run our air compressors into our frame mounted tank underneath, and then we're gonna run two more lines from there into the AccuAir tank up here in the bed. So. We get to spend a whole lot of time drilling holes in this fresh bed liner. These factory lines on our air compressors are pretty nice, but we want everything to match and we can't make any more of these. So we're gonna make our own AN lines. Now we have to measure for that because those aren't long enough. And I don't feel like trying to run the AN line itself to mark it and cut it. So what we're gonna do instead, we're gonna do it with string. First off, when you're measuring for a line with string, you're gonna tape it off at your start point and then anywhere along the route where it's gonna make a bend. You're gonna tape it in place so that you can get a good estimate for how long your line needs to be. So we're running through the bed. I've already got it taken care of up top. So now we're gonna come up and over the frame rail and then just get it right about here. And then give it an extra inch or two just to be safe and cut. All right, now that that's cut, we can go ahead and we're gonna bring the truck down and then we're gonna take that line, or rather what will be the length of the line, we're gonna take that string, tape it to our line and use that as a guide to get our cut. Now, of course, the string isn't always gonna stay exactly in place or be an exact measurement. We're gonna make up for that, putting our tape just a little bit off the end of it and then marking on the outer edge of the tape. And when you're cutting AN line, you wanna make sure you get a good clean cut, obviously. I test fitted this and the length is perfect. And then I went ahead and I got some grommets put in here in the bed. That way, you know, that thin metal can't dig into this once we get back on the road and things start shaking around. We're gonna run this through and then we'll put the ends on this so that we can connect it at the compressor and at our reservoir tank underneath. First off, I'm gonna make sure these grommets are good and spread out. Work it in there nice and easy. Then just run it through until you got a decent amount on both sides. We're ready to get the hose ends on here. Getting these AN fittings installed isn't really all that hard. I know it might seem intimidating, especially if you've never done it before, but there's just a couple basic things you need to do this. Primarily, you need assembly lube and thread sealer. I like to put just a little bit of lube on there. And then I also like to take a socket just to get good press on there. Get a little bit of a twist. Make sure it goes on there straight. You want it so that you're almost up to it with the line itself. And then we're gonna be using the tub method for the thread sealant. And get it started by hand. You wanna take a little bit of tape you can wrap it nice and tight up against the back of this end of the fitting. That way, if it starts to back out while you're tightening this down, you'll know it. 
and you can start over. I like to leave it on the connections before testing. That way you can see if you got a leak, it'll start to bubble out. Now that we've got one fitting done, we just get to do that seven more times. That way all of our lines are made and then all of this will be connected. All right, we should be just about through. There we are. All right, let's keep going. We're about ready to get this line connected here. That reach is perfect so far. So now that we've got it run and connected to our tank, we know that it's not gonna need to change in length. There we go. We got our first bag connected, and that means we still have three more to do. And we're starting to run a little bit short on time today, but I really wanna see this thing working before we have to get out of here. So I think we're just gonna make a little bit of magic happen here. Hmm. Whoa. Hey, that actually worked, which means that this stuff must be working now, and there's only one way to find out. Looks like we got an air system, but we can't call it done quite yet. We still have some clearancing we need to do, like Ben mentioned before, so we're gonna have to call it a day for right now, but we're gonna send this thing out to get some specialty work done, so next time you see it, it's gonna be just a little bit different. We'll see you next time.